Hello, everybody, and welcome back to PGL Tavern Tales. This is day three. My name is Nimsh, and I'm here with Raven and Lothar to bring you this amazing tournament, the, the finals of the tournament. Guys, uh, how are you doing? We had two amazing days of Hearthstone. This is the third day. We are going to have our winner. Somebody walks away with $8,000, hopefully gets back home with the money as well. Yep. It's pretty early, though. It's like 9 a.m. in Europe. Yeah, but that's true. It's actually, it's actually really early for tournaments, right? Like, we usually we play... Midday, a bit yeah. later, yeah. Afternoon, afternoon yeah. in the afternoon, yeah. yeah. It might take toll on some players who tend to like, you know, wake up. Uh, who have like that, one that yeah. gamer sleep schedule. Yeah, exactly, like Fabad. Yeah. But <laughs> so does it uh, mean that early bird gets the top deck? Oh, well, might be, might be the case. But the first first meta we'll have is Lifecut versus Hoi. I I think uh, actually those both players are like the early birds birds of Hearthstone. There might be specifically because Hoi has birds like parrots and stuff. But yeah. uh, before we talk about those guys, let's talk about the tournament overall uh, and how it looked like. We uh, we have 16 players total, uh, four GSL groups. We've played the groups on the first day. Two players advanced from each. Uh, eight players yesterday, double elimination. So two players are, are already out. Uh, we are playing best of five and uh, we will have the grand final. So this means we have the upper bracket, lower bracket. The winner of the upper bracket will have that advantage. If he loses in the final, in the grand final, he has another chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see the prize pool there. First place is 8,000, then goes down to four, then three for third, two for fourth, and then 1,500 uh, respectively after that. And this is one of the bonuses for, for all the players that have come to the tournament. They, they turn up and they're at least getting 500 at the very least if they don't make it out of groups. So, you know, not a bad trip for them. They get to come to Bucharest, hang out for a bit, hopefully win some Hearthstone games. But worst case scenario, yep. can watch the rest of the great games that are going on. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to the games today since the players, I think like they're getting better each day with the mm -hmm. format. Because uh, it's a complicated format. We have, we basically have uh, had a situation when day one players were going blind with the with the strategy they they built. They had like a huge um, evolution tree of the strategies that was that was used and modified for the first first games. While on day two they had the perfect information about the decks uh, that the players are playing because we had released all the deck lists for top eight. So then the ban strategy changed because they had uh, more information beforehand, right? And now during day three, they, I think they made a lot of, uh, just learned a lot. Yeah, like improvements they, to they the strategy. They improved. Like yeah. we have seen it with Hoi, right? Mm -hmm. Not only he improved with his bans and picks, but also improved in the gameplay because he wasn't efficient with the deck in the first game. Yeah, example. well, it's, it's another factor as well. When it, Because this is a, a nine deck tournament, you can't just be like, right, I'm going to bring my top three, top four decks and, and be great, you know, practice those. It's like you have to actually be able to play like all nine classes and all the deck choices you brought with them. We see, we heard Hoi yesterday normally say, well, I normally favor the ramp Yasharaj style druid. It's what he's played the most recently. But he realized that the Maligos version is probably more powerful in general and in this format. So he had to just try and get used to it very quickly. And we've seen that happen, as we said, over the course of the past couple of days. So that's been pretty good to watch. I, I do agree that the format is one of the most interesting things we have in this tournament specifically. So uh, let's, let's look how it looks overall, because there are so many strategies. But um, we have nine classes prepared by every player. There is a ban. Then they pick one class. There's, there are two bans after that. So this means that out of the top four classes, let's say, three are unplayable most of the mm -hmm. time. But as you uh, guys mentioned, there are different strategies. We, we had seen Priest doing great. We have seen Druid doing great. We have the Dragon Warrior. Actually, we haven't seen that much Dragon Warrior over the course of the t two days. I think Druid was one of the, the biggest decks that we've seen, and uh, Priest, obviously, as well, with the different strategies. We've seen Stan Sivka starting with the Priest. We've seen um, Sixo starting with Paladin. So it's, it's really great how, uh, what Lothar said, how players evolve. And uh, what is the, the best part for you guys in this format overall? I think for me at least is seeing the different deck building styles you can you can do because a lot of the decks that the players have brought aren't decks you could just rock up on ladder with at, at all. I'm sure people will try, but I'm sure they won't work that well. Whereas we've seen the reason Priest has been quite successful is that even in a the, the, you know not best class in the world, you can if you just build a deck to do one specific job with any class, you're going to get the job done, right? And because of the ban strategies, like you said, you ban three classes, mm -hmm. and at that point, they've only picked one. Your opponent's only picked one, so you can actually just push them into a certain style of play, especially if you know the deck list, as you mentioned, Lothar. Then you can get a list that just does a very specific job, like we've seen the heavy anti-aggro priests. If you push them into the aggro classes, 
or the aggro decks, then the priest can get some wins, and we've seen that happen. So it's kind of cool to watch. Yeah, correct. Uh, for me, actually, uh, the, the best thing about this format is the fact that usually when we are casting tournaments with Conquest or l even the last hero standing with one ban, uh, there was like a celebration when two players brought six different classes. Mm -hmm. While in here, in most situations, there's actually one common class, and other classes are just like all all present. You know, so. Uh, it's amazing to see that we, I think w if we count the exact stats for each class, I would say there's only one class as being more present than the other, while every other class is being like just spread out. And that's amazing to see in a tournament uh, because we have like a, va a wide variety of metagame. We have to, we get to see all the classes, we get to see different builds, different archetypes, like even Paladin had two b different builds, mm -hmm. Priest had two different builds. Rogue Both had two different builds. See, three well. different yeah. builds of Paladin. Oh yeah, right. Seen the Zoth, uh, aggro and agri, uh, yeah. uh, right, right, right. I forgot about the Zoth yeah. because it wasn't doing that great, right? When you compare it. To oh, the never said it was. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> we just said we've seen it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But so, so it's great just to see the amount of strategies that we have mm -hmm. in this tournament. And uh, in my opinion, this format rewards not only the player that is efficient at playing all the classes, but also rewards the players that um, well had the best idea how to prepare for this tournament. Yep, completely for agree. And for me personally, it's just the time that players put into those strategies when they sit down. Because we have players before the, the match starts, we give them a couple of minutes to just uh, do the picks and bans. And the amount of like thinking and overthinking there and trying to guess what your opponent is going to start with is just insane how deep they go with the strategies. So I've been talking to Tessin the other day, and he says, all right, so I have those three routes planned for my opponent to go and pick. And then opponent picks a different class, and it's like, oh, I need to change it completely now. I have to have a different strategy. So how do you adjust to what happens? And uh, what is your strategy? What is your opponent's strategy? It's it's really big part of this tournament. And then just Hearthstone, last hero standing, uh, just good format. Yeah, it's just funny you, you mentioned Tess. Actually, I was speaking to him yesterday before his uh, match versus Sivka. He was like, right, so I've got my plan versus everyone. I'm pretty sure what they're going to ban first, and then you build on that. He said, but what do I do versus someone who first picks Priest? <laughs> like I just yeah, don't know. Like how do you how do you go against someone and try and beat them in the pick and ban phase when they just pick whatever they want, seemingly yeah. at, seemingly at random? And he was uh, he was kind of worried that he did end up taking the taking the uh, match yesterday versus Sifka three one. So you know it worked out for him in the end. It was just a funny response where it's like all this planning, but when someone just first picks priest, I don't know what they to do. They can't <laughs> surprise you. But talking yeah. about Tessin, actually, let's look at the bracket and uh, Lothar. Can you take us through what happened yesterday there? Sure. Um, actually, we. We, ne uh, we didn't had that many close matches, right? You can see a lot of 3-0s, 3-1s. Um, we had Super JJ and Howie. I think like those those were the two guys that were favorite in the matches. Although every single player here is uh, a high level player, but when I would have to make a bet, I would say JJ and Howie will advance, especially based on how they perform perform in the groups. Uh, then we had Xixo uh, fall into Tessin, which Tessin seems to be the underdog of the tournament, doing really well uh, in, in general. Sansivka left coach, two friends battling it out, and it was a pretty even match. And quite a, a, um, a history was made as well when the priest made a reverse sweep 3 0 mm -hmm. against a specific lineup from life coach. And then uh, JJ and Tessin will meet in the upper bracket final, which will be amazing. It will be the third match, uh, if I'm not mistaken, today to see. So. That's about it. All right, and we'll be star starting with Life Coach uh, versus Hoy and then uh, the other match. So Life Coach versus Hoy, what do you guys think? Who has an edge there? Hoy, you've mentioned Hoy, Hoy was favored v versus Orange, mm -hmm. but uh, there was some Yogg-Saron magic happening right there, so I think it was maybe closer than you normally would think. Hoy versus Life Coach, though. Life Coach also had some rough games versus, uh, he lost versus Priest 3-0 yesterday, um, and uh, then he had some, uh, well, not really that easy games versus 6 0, but he was able to, to win overall versus 6 0. So, how is he poised versus Hoi? Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be an interesting one because uh, I think a lot of this series is going to go down in the, the pick and ban phase as well. We've seen mm -hmm. a lot of players talk about how impactful it is. But I'm, I'm just wondering like, if Life Coach is going to bother banning the Druid out and how scared he is. Because we've been saying for the past two days, Druid has been absolutely ridiculous. Hoy was 9 0 with Druid yes. at one point. He went uh, 2 3 0s in groups. And then the first game, uh, the first match, sorry, of the knockout stage was 3 0 as well. Yes. Uh, all with Druid. 
So we sort of laughing and joking about it initially, and then we're just like, do you actually just ban Druid? Because it's, it's clearly this much of a threat. So I'll be interested to see if Life Coach goes for that, or if he has some sort of strategy built to try and beat the Druid, because we've seen that it definitely feels like Hoy's Druid, can, and maybe Druid in general, can actually just beat any single matchup. Like, yep. relatively easily as well. We've seen Hoy just 3-0 so many times, and other players win with it. Uh, I don't know. I hope Life Coach bans Druid for, for his sake, at least. Well, we'll see how that uh, will happen today. Yesterday, we actually had that when how he lost his match. He is, his Druid was banned. Yeah. That was the thing. Uh, but also, we have seen Life Coach being kind of shaky when it comes to the execution in the last match. He was talking in the interview that, yeah, it, it, that he made some mistakes, and uh, I'm sure that he... He had a good night's sleep, sleep n and now mm. is ready to play on the top level that he usually represents. So, uh, looking forward to see how Lovecraft is playing, especially with the, f with the decks that he's not using that much. An example, the Temple Mage, that's not a deck that you see Lifeguard playing often. Well, he said that right. yesterday, didn't he, in the, in the interview as well. He was like, well, I, I'm not really a Temple Mage player, but mm -hmm. it just fit his lineup. And I, w I think that was the game that we saw the most shaky play from him. Yeah. In terms of he just he openly said, like, yep, I did this and got punished, did this and got very punished, did this mm -hmm. and got punished. And we saw that happen. So, you know, Hoy, uh, I think Hoy will definitely be trying to cash in on that and maybe push Life Coach towards the classes or decks that he, you know, he thinks he's not as comfortable with. Yeah, so a very interesting match in front of us. And those are our thoughts. Uh, we actually had a chance to sit down with the players yesterday. So let's hear their thoughts as well. Hey guys, welcome to the Remake Bucharest. I'm enjoying my time here. I actually managed to win the first two games very closely. And yeah, after <laughs> the three, the priest completely uh, demolished me. Yeah, he completely distracted me 3 to 0. And um, I uh, cannot say much to that. I mean, priest, if he really draws, is re I mean, priest is very reactive. And if he draws the tools which are required, yes, then it's very, very good for him. But sometimes he just, he's just not doing anything. So uh, it's OK in this very format. It makes some sense to get pr uh, priest because um, you can ban the class which are very, very bad for priest. Not saying that it becomes a tier one deck. But um, yeah, there are spots where you can definitely pick priest, second pick, third pick. So I played against Sixo and uh, yeah, it was very convenient. The first two games I won very closely, but I think that they were being played fine. The last game was, I would say, yes, not being played uh, or executed perfectly. Then uh, also bad luck. Um, and that resulted in a win, actually. Yeah, so um, that's all pretty cool. If you can misplay and have probably, and it's not going well for you and you still win, then uh, that's, I mean, obviously he was way more unlucky because he couldn't just draw any kind of heal. So that was pretty awesome, yeah. I mean, awesome for the win, not awesome for him, of course. Yeah, for him it was pretty awful, sure. I would definitely like to face Hoi, but that's not about whom I like to face, but it's rather about whom I don't like to face. As like always, I don't like to face uh, friends or good friends. So, um, yeah, JJ is one of them. So that means, yes, I don't want to play him, of course not, yeah. A life coach is so genuine. <laughs> Just yeah. being honest about what, what's happening. He didn't have any luck. Ah, oh, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like as well, he's just like, yeah, who, who do you want to face, who do you not want to face? Nothing to do with like strength of opponent, I want to face the, you know, the easier player or anything. It's like, I actually just don't want to try and knock out my friends in this tournament. So, you know, try and meet them in the finals if possible. So that's really cool as well, life coach. Um, not really scared of anyone in terms of the competitive sense, but d doesn't want, really want to have that issue with JJ, I guess. Yeah, but... Honestly, whenever I see Life Coach, it seems like he has a lot of fun. He's just uh, enjoying the tournament, having fun. Even though he prepared and he's super competitive, he's just uh, going through it and enjoying what's happening right there. But uh, we also had a chance to talk with Hoy. Let's see uh, his perspective. It was a pretty fast match. I won 3-0 with Jörg Druid. And before that, I was already 6-0 with Jörg Druid. So I've been on a really good streak with Jörg Druid. And yeah, I got some, some insane Jörgs in the two last game, which definitely affect the game, but I still think, yeah, that was kind of what happened. The thing about Young, well, it's not a fun and interactive card, that's for sure, but yeah, it's, it's a bad card, but the card is too good that you cannot play the competitive game because then the other people will play the competitive game. It's just, it's really hard to make board century decks because Young punish board century decks because when it comes down, it destroys the board and then you get a lot of card draw seekers and so on. It's, and it's really, really hard to play around. I have a pretty bad record against uh, JJ. I've faced him a lot of time. He's a really, really good player. And um, I think the most important match in that game was the first in the Warrior Mirror because I really relied on my control boy in, in, the, in that series. But I just didn't get the Borax and didn't really get all my high drops, so I couldn't really fight on board. 
and I have to make some, I have to hit with the whip, and even though I had brawl in hand, so it was like, it, it was a really, really awkward series. When I lost that one, I felt he was definitely in favor, and he also won in the end. It's gonna be fun. Life coach is a really, really good player, and his strategy is very different compared to many of the other players, so I definitely have to make some practice and pick out the best strategy against us. It's also funny because Life Coach actually brought a lot of aggro decks in this tournament. He normally is mostly known for control decks, but he even brought Dragon Warrior and even Aggro Paladin instead of, I know he used to love the Arena Paladin. So the strategy is very different than I normally see for Life Coach, but I think it's going to be a fun series. And uh, that's a roller coaster of emotions, actually, in a way, because you have those uh, Yuxarans and stuff. But also, uh, what I really like uh, are the decks. So the fact that for this for this next ma next match, it's really hard to predict what are we going to see. Are we going to see aggro versus aggro, aggro versus control, control versus control, depending on the bands. But uh, Lothar, what what do you think? Um, who has an edge in this match? Like, is Life Coach comfortable with those aggro decks? Is he going to take it? He won versus six, so. Uh, as I said before, when usually we see Life Coach, uh, he is tending to not play aggressive decks uh, because his, his play is not always stable, I would say mm -hmm. like that, right? Uh, but he's a top-level player and ev whenever I talk with him about a new deck, whenever we test something, whenever we talk about ideas, even when he he's not really that experienced with an archetype, he always has this uh, idea how to evaluate the plays, right? So um, I would say that he, uh, whatever he's playing, he will be doing decent uh, 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 or well. And it all depends if if just they both have the best deck for the format right now available. And it seems like actually how he has his Druid open. As, yeah. was, as we're trying, I think, worried a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, Raven? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm genuinely surprised, but, you know, Life Coach knows what he's doing. He's obviously no doubt been talking to Tice as well about mm -hmm. the, the whole mm -hmm. strategy with Hoy. No doubts at, at all about that. And, yeah, it's a, a few cool things to pick out here. We see that, you know, Hoy's Druid, first pick. Never a question. If yep. it's open, you just go for it. Well, the it's ban is important, actually. The first the first is the ban, right? So <clears throat> Life Coach banning the Contra Warrior that Hoy is playing, then the Zoff Warrior, mm. and then Hoy banning the Shaman which means that Dru Druid is a possible pick. So Life Coach, in his strategy, thought like this Contra Warrior might be more troublesome than a Druid pick? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, it, you know, I'm not... Life Coach probably knows more than me about this, so that's fine. But I would definitely just be afraid of how flexible the Druid is overall. And I I'm not really sure how well his uh, his decks are going to perform, because we even saw, I think, yesterday, like, Tempo Maids just failing to Druid as well. Um, yep. Not not necessarily with Life Coach specifically, but uh, in general, some of the other players who brought Tempo Mage, what used to be a really strong matchup because of Mirror Entity uh, back in the day, you know, maybe a bit more because uh, the Druid's more flexible now. N not only that, like the Mirror Entities had an impact on the game, of mm -hmm. course, but the thing is that the Druids now have more projectiles. Mm. They have Moonfire, Falnos, Falnos with Swipe, which wasn't present back then. The possibility was basically as a Drake and to innovate Swipe to take. And, and even like Feral Rage control. as well, you know, it's yeah. just way more flexible now for the Druids. So Definitely way more answers for the Druid and yeah. immediate answers. Not You don't have to wait with Dominion for one turn to do something, mm -hmm. right? So Druid is definitely strong as well. Um, but we see double Priest on both sides. The second pick Priest for Hoy and the third pick Priest for Life Coach. So are we going to see some Priest and Priest action again? Those are, I believe, different decks because uh, Life Coach is playing the Dragon uh, Priest. Mm -hmm. Hoy was playing s like Controlish. More curve to six, or is it also like a dragon build? No, Please I'm remember. I'm not I'm sure. No, I'm actually. blank. <laughs> if we, if we, yeah, you know what? I can't recall to be honest. Uh, we, this is the only problem with all the players bringing nine deck lists. It's very difficult to try and keep track of them but all. You didn't memorize all of them. I didn't Come memorize on. all. Uh, you know, every single deck list for every single player. No, I apologize, Nim Chavez. I've let you down clearly. Both archetypes would have ma made sense, right? Yeah. Dragon, uh, dragon priest is good against aggro anyway because it has huge minions that can just be a roadblock for the aggro, while the Contra version has more answers uh, in form of Shadow World Pain. Uh, Shadow World Death is not really that useful, but you have Shadow World Pain, you have uh, Excavated Evil, you have Arcanai Circle, you have Flash and heals two. either as defensive or aggressive option if you pair it with, with Arcanai. So there's a lot of options uh, to just beat aggro decks with the Priest, with either archetypes. So who do you guys think won the mind games here? Who has the better lineup? 
I, I think purely because Hoy has got his druid, I, I would just be afraid. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're going on about the druid a lot, but I generally think it's the mo one of the most all-rounded, flexible uh, decks in the game at the moment, and really doesn't have any weak matchups particularly. Even we've seen Zoo druid perform pretty well versus Zoo so far this weekend. It's not been too terrible, and you know Hoy's been playing druid quite well. He's been by far the best performance with that deck. So I don't know. Life coach must have a plan. I have no doubt about that. But if it was me, I would uh, maybe fall into the trap of a respect ban for the Druid. All right, Lothar, what do you think? Uh, I would say it's pretty decent right now. The Druid has some advantages over the lineup, I would say, because uh, it's a good answer against Dragon Warrior as well, and this is the first matchup that we'll see. Maybe it's not like, you know, hugely favoring um, the Druid, but he has a slight edge in my, uh, in my eyes, unless the Warrior can buy a lot of tempo with a one-mana execute. But remem mm -hmm. remember, guys, that this Dragon Warrior is a bit different. Uh, this is the life coach build without any endgame, I believe. This deck is specifically built to fight versus Agros. There is no Ragnaros, no Malkarok, no Onyxia, I believe. Well, we didn't see Malkarok for like almost half a year. I yeah, mean, but I'm like exaggerating, yeah. just but yeah. endgame, right? Like, m he might curve out to like six drops, but that will be basically it. Yeah, I think one of the ways uh, he might have to play the match, especially now we can see Hoy's uh, opening hand after m uh, the mulligan, is that a lot of the times versus Druid, you just go, if possible, you go all out aggression mm -hmm. and just don't give them the time to piece together all you know, like all the crazy combos they can do to really deal with the board. We do see the curate there in Life Coach's hand as well, so we'll be able to draw him some options later. All mm -hmm. right, the game is ready, guys. Have fun casting. Take it away. Thank you, Nimsh. By the way, that was kind of silly because uh, the mulligan from Life Coach was, uh, took mulligan away deep. Ravaging Ghoul because it usually has small impact mm. against, uh, against Druid. But fortunately for him, he got it back, the second copy, because <laughs> the Druid has actually had uh, one Living Roots, but now he has two. I don't believe he will use the second one, but he didn't. So yep. it's overextended into the Ghoul. But I would say that this might be the good Ghoul turn for, uh, for Life Coach, right? Yeah, and I, I think as well, in, in a lot of the matchups with Dragon Warrior, depending on what your mulligan looks like, if you don't have it, Alex Strauss as champion mm -hmm. or War Axe, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. less relevant versus Druid, but you can normally mulligan away the three drops because you run so many in the deck yes as especially the curator builds now normally running two monkeys yep. so you have two monkeys two girls two froth and berserkers at least you know so you have so many three drops that the odds on you even if you throw a ghoul away getting then a froth in you know one of the others or maybe the alex Strass champion the war axe is so high that you can actually afford to a lot of the time but like you said the uh the ghoul is going to feel pretty fortunate here are you are you afraid enough though because it does use the coin, and that's going to be pretty nice to try and get the Twilight Guardian out a little bit earlier. That's true. Um, there, are, there are a few things to consider if you want to play the Ravagen Ghoul. One of the things is that the free drop will die to a two drop from the Druid, which is which is the Wrath, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if you play the Frothing Berserker, then you basically also give an, your opponent an out in the form of another Living Roots. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually the way you want to play is play the Frothing Berserker first. But in this case, it, may, it just doesn't make sense yep. to put it out there and maybe die to a wrath as well. I think as well, a wrath on turn three versus druid, great. You know, like mm -hmm. you know, unless they you know innovate out something crazy, you're like fantastic. You've just played off curve uh, in a deck that you really want to ramp and actually just start dropping down the the big minions pretty early. I feel like uh, when it comes to the wrath on turn three, I agree about that. That it's it is um, okay -ish for a player to be happy about it that someone is off curve. But when it comes to a druid player that doesn't have the ramp. He's happy with doing anything on those turns. He just doesn't want to hero power. Yeah. So having to even use the wrap on turn three just to kill a minion, it's perfectly fine because he will he will have a curve later on. Yeah, so it, it's completely fine for Hoy in his situation, but for Life Coach, he might have a wild growth, right? You, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he, there might be more yes. ramp available, and he stopped it. So both players are happy with the situation as it came out there, and. Um, now it's going to be even more options for Live Coach. He does now have the Draconic Crusher, so the Twilight Guardian is alive in terms mm -hmm. of the effect. Mm -hmm. Can't play it this turn, of course, but you know it, it's always nice to have the high cost dragon, right? It's just yeah. going to chill, yeah. sit in your hand, and know all your activators are there. Now we can also draw the Blackwing Corruptors, which mm -hmm. are fantastic for turn five against, especially against Druid, because you need to push the board control at the same time while trading, and that's kind of hard to do without the executes and an activator for that so with current uh, with the current hand uh he has um what life coach has uh when it comes to options wh whatever he will draw he will actually be benefiting from it yep. so there will be no draws that will be really bad yeah and you know what life coach is in a really really good position here with this frothing because you're naturally afraid of a swipe just to clear it off but 
There isn't one there for Hoy, and he can now hide the frothing behind the Twilight Guardian next turn. Mm -hmm. And how does the Druid really deal with both? You know, if you swipe the uh, the frothing Berserker, if Hoy even draws into it, then there's still the Twilight Guardian on the board. And then the Warrior's always going to stay one minion ahead mm -hmm. and uh, like try and keep two minions on the board at least every single turn. And then that's a problem because, you know, we all know Druid kind of struggles with mass removal outside Yogg, basically. So, yep. He's looking pretty nice. You can go Twilight Guardian this turn, hide the prop in, and then go into you know, multiple options next turn as well. You could even just go Fizz when Monkey Alex tries as champion, go wide. And just be like, yeah, to deal with all of this plus frothing berserk is still. Alive. I actually like that a lot. Uh, yeah. If your opponent will not put anything that is like requires immediate attention, you would like to go wide and just mm -hmm. push the damage. But now well, we see that the emperor will head board, and that kind of requires attention. So let's see what the life pitch will do. You can still do the same turn and just attack mm -hmm. with the Alexstrasza's champion and the Twilight Guardian into the Emperor, buffs the Frothing, mm -hmm. leave the 3-3 three, three up, and still play the Monkey, which will defend the uh, the minions, or the Frothing more importantly, against the Maya Keeper as well. But it will be kind of horrible against a swipe. He will lose the entire board to a single what swipe. No. Uh, the Frothing will still live. No, well... He He'll have the Monkey... Mon well, if the Frothing dies, the Monkey's alive, right? Oh, oh sorry, you mean... Uh, yeah, right, correct. Well, the Maya the my Keep will clear it up, but the swipe means there's not a lot of follow-up from the Druid. But yes, swipe would be kind of rough. But you also can't really leave Emperor alive. So let's see. Well, if you trade Twilight Guardian into the... I actually don't think you can... Um, if you want to do that, let's see. If you play the um, Alex Rose's Champion and the Fe uh, Fierce Monkey, you trade your... Twilight Guardian into the Maya Keeper that's only four attacks. You can't line up the frothing yeah. well, no. That's yeah. that, that's the problem and why I think you're kind of forced to use the Twilight Guardian as well. Uh, just into the Emperor. And that is kind of bad against Swipe. Oh, he ignores oh, the Emperor in this Oh, in this okay. Yeah. I, I mean, th this was always an option. An option that never feels great mm -hmm. to ignore an Emperor because you have no idea what's in the hand for, uh, for Hoi. And now does, does Hoi just nourish for three? And get the, the bigger Emperor discount? I feel like you can go for the Guides then. You don't have much follow-up though, right? I mean, Innovate's okay, but what are you gonna, gonna draw into? So if he goes Gadget Zen and then Innovate's, he's gonna be on exactly four mana, which means he needs Wrath off the one Innovate. Uh, it's not Wrath, Swipe, sorry. You know, off, off the mm -hmm, one Innovate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to deal with this board or help deal with it. And that's, that's a big ask, I think. Oh, but Hoy is going to ask. He's going to ask the he question here of Gadizan. He needs an answer for the Frothing Berserker, so he's fishing for that. Raven Idol is helpful, but he doesn't have the mana now for a swipe. There's a Wrath, still three damage on the draw. Oh, Ooh, and an Innovate, though. Innovate. And another chance to get another uh, projectile, and it's a Yogg. Unfortunately, now he can actually nourish. Well, I think if you've gone this way, you need to start dealing with the board. So Wrath trade into the monkey and just have a single tear. Oh, oh a one off. He could get another innovate. No, no. Uh, oh yeah, right. He got Raven Idol innovate, yes, right? You're correct. Oh, or did he? Did he get Raven Idol Wrath and then drew the innovate off the gadgets then? No, no, no. It was from the Raven okay, Idol. Okay, right. Okay. So the frothing is alive, but also. Now at least Hoy is presenting two th threats of his own, right? Mm -hmm. He's got Emperor and Gadget Zan on the board. Two minions you definitely don't want to just stick around for the Druid here. But also there's a lot of damage. There's 10 at the moment available for Life Coach across the two minions. Um, but nothing honest, else to really add to it. It doesn't look great for Life Coach. He's missing the weapon. He's missing a Blackwing Corruptor. Those are the cards that he really needs right now. So... Uh, this doesn't look good. All the all the actions that he can do are really awkward. If you go for the execute and the emperor, uh, then you most likely would like to uh, just ignore the gadgetan, but you can't really do that, especially uh, after an ac additional activation from the emperor um, this turn when uh, you draw like four cards. So I feel like if you've committed to the aggro style, though, you need to go all in. Mm -hmm. So I I wouldn't even mind like as your Drake execute face. Because then again, you, you're presenting two four health minions to the druid. So it's going to be kind of awkward to deal with everything. Okay, so there will be no... Uh, okay. th this will be just a Draken Crush. Okay? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. This is definitely the other option. You still leave the gadgets on it, which I think is fine at this point. Like I said, if you're going to commit, then commit. Mm -hmm. If you start like, trying to stop now, then mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. your previous turns were nowhere near as good. 
because you decided to go aggressive. So there's going to be an answer required from Hoy for this Dracon Crusher and the Frothing Berserker. There is Swipe available, but not a lot else that's really going to help out. Yep, no taunts as well. What to do? Feeling Yog. Mm. There's been a decent amount of spells played. Well, let's count first the options from Gadzatan. There was one Rap Fuse, two Living Roots. Uh, so that leaves a Moonfire, two Moonfires, and a Wrath, and a second swipe in the deck. Those are four outs that he can draw to help clear hmm. the board. He could also get Feral Rages, which help him. How about the Feral Rages? Y you can't use the phase as a as a trait uh, mechanic here, so... No, I mean, like, ju to just negate the attack from the Draconic Crusher. Oh, you know, like, just, like, nourish into them, and then just say, okay, well, Draconic Crusher hits me for nine, I can Feral Rage for mm -hmm. eight. Sure, we'll call it quits this, this round. Oh, man. I... I like, this is really bad. Yeah, these are all the... Oh, Hoy. there's this the Feral Rage, a card too late. Not lucky with those rolls at all. All the spells are hiding somewhere in the deck, and that means he will be on 4 HP. There's a second Innervate, but not enough time to cycle oh. through, and he missed the Giant. Did he cast Innervate, though? Because it looked like he cast Innervate. But I think he missed it, actually. Oh. No, he had the time oh. for the Innervate, but did he play the Giant? Oh, no! No! This is something we talked about with him yesterday. He yeah. was saying that he is waiting too long with with the deck. To, there's too many animations, too many Especially discoveries. Especially when you catch Zan with, you yeah. know, with Nourish, I mean... Oof, okay, that's very rough for Hoy. He's now just straight up missing an AA on the board, and that is huge. You've not just missed, you know, that you is know dropping a Maya Keeper or something. He like You're literally missing a, a potential way for Hoy to claw himself back into the game. And Life Coach only requires, what, four damage? But he doesn't have it at the moment. <laughs> and there's no chance of getting the four damage of a draw. If you go for the Azadrake, there's no way you can do four yeah. damage. I just the like Kyore, yeah. I think here. the curator is fine because you draw um, uh, you draw Finley. Yeah, Finley and a dragon because he's uh, he's already drawn the second monkey, mm -hmm. and I believe there's no other beasts in the deck. You normally just run the double monkey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's already played two there. So he goes for the other dragon instead. Black and corrupted is okay. actually a decent card for the next turn because this is this if you have few hours it will give you additional damage for the next turn. There's a fear war axe uh, with the. Uh, with the Black Crown uh, six damage from hand. Look at all the Fandral value. Ooh. So many blue glowy cards. So, yeah, that's so fe Fel Rage has to be played, I feel. Unless, uh, unless is this just an all-in Yog? I don't it think it's casting of spells. I m it might be an all-in Yog because then um, uh, if the Yog manages to help you, you can drop the, uh, uh, the Arcan Giant after it. Because now you play the Raven mm -hmm. Idol, you have one more spell for Yog. Uh, then you can play Yog, you can play Archangel if you don't die. I think I, I think I like Fell Rage, and then try and Raven Idol into a bit more damage. Then you can swipe trade to well, try and clear to the board. You want to play the Raven Idol first, unless you have ten cards, right? Uh, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he can. Yeah. yeah, which is Damn. tricky in itself. But I think whatever Hoy does, he needs to make a decision now because the rope has already started burning, and this yeah. is a real, real problem here. Goes for the Malagos. Oh, we can swipe, swipe right? Yeah. But that's six damage, so he'll need to trade the Fandral, so he's not building uh, no. any any life, right? Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, it's nine, nine and oh, six. What I'm talking yeah, about. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. plus five, yeah. But still, it doesn't give him any life, so he's at no. four. But life coach One is off. missing the damage. Imagine if you played Kyori at last turn. Could at least go for Finley. <laughs> um. Well, that kind of sucks. Mm. <laughs> he can uh, he can execute the Malagos. Which the I think at this point you have to. I, I think so as well. The, the Malagos, because you've seen so many cards in Hoy's hand, and cards, a lot of cards that haven't been played for a few turns as well could quite mm -hmm. easily be Moonfires, mm -hmm. and you just die. Like, <laughs> yep. and, but if he executes Malagos, then he will five six. He doesn't have a, a great answer to stop this. The rest of the damage. There's 11. Yeah. That's scary in itself. I really would have liked the curator from Life Coach. I would have felt it, I felt it gave him way more options this turn. It's, I think it's both options when it comes to the Finley, because you can squeeze the Black and Corruptor with the Finley for the Hunter Hero power, know. but also um, it kind of increases the chances of you drawing a Fear War X. Yeah. Yeah. And the taunt. 
yes, obviously we saw Malaga swipe, so mm -hmm. the taunt wouldn't have mattered, but the taunt wouldn't have been bad. Six health taunt against Druid is kind of awkward to deal with, which would have yep. defended against the Draconic Crusher as well. Oh my god. Moonblade no. Paul. This is Ooh. 12 HP. And he can play... Sorry, 14 HP. Yeah, and he can play Raven Idol as well. I think you Raven Idol first, right? Because yep. he, can, he, can, he does have the space. Now we can, now we can because uh, you usually want to have the spell from the um, for the Raven Idol mm -hmm. first, right? But when you have Fandral on board, uh, then the minion is actually being drawn first. Mm -hmm. Does have the room in the hand, though, to be able to play this. So, By the way, Holly's just getting it going now. It's like, just, just play it, make a very swift decision. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm. Voodoo Doctor. I think the Voodoo Doctor, Doctor one. Uh, if you would be concerned with your health totals, so when you don't have a fair rate and a moon I think it's correct. Yeah. Ooh, mm -hmm. oh, wait, is it lethal now? So the draw? Yeah. That's 11, that's plus 6, 17, and then fair <laughs> rate. And oh, no one. Yep. Wow. It's how you going to see it. I yeah, believe so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. he picked Savage Roll for a start, so, you know, th there was always an inkling there that he, you know, how much damage he had available to him. And that is going to be game. And out of nowhere, Holly, some some very shaky play from Holly. Uh, yeah. Straight up missing Arcane Giant is just That was bad. actually like a <laughs> huge mechanical yeah. mistake. Yeah, Not yeah. enough time, roped out, and he lost huge advantage on board because mm -hmm. of that. Uh, but at the same time, fortunate for him, Life Coach missed out uh, on the most important draws. So a second Black and Corruptor, um, one of the two weapons, the Finley, mm -hmm. uh, which could have helped him to close out the game. And uh, Corcrons. Corcrons as well, well would have yeah. been way, you know, Corcron applies so much pressure because the three health, mm -hmm. other than mm -hmm. Swipe or Wrath, is like, there's no good way to deal with it as well. And it's just four damage off the cuff there. So, yeah, you know, Life Coach got a little bit unfortunate, I would say, with the, the ha going for the aggressive play style, but not having the cards in hand to support that play style. I completely he was going on a limb here. But exactly. With like with, with the boss that he had with the frothing, I completely understand why he went hard on that, which is it's good. But then when your hand starts ticking over and you don't have any of the more aggressive cards available, it's going to be difficult to close out, especially when you know there's Feral Rages and such for a Druid. Because even without the lethal there from Hoy, he was in a very decent position because he got Moonglade Paul. And yeah. even just a Feral Rage without Fandral would have been good to heal up. That's correct. Uh, everything what you said is correct. And, but I agree with the... With the play style that Life Code made, especially the turn six Dragon Crusher, because every other play was so awkward, right? Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing felt good. And mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're gonna start aggressive, like with the frothing, continue. You know, <laughs> just, yep. just carry on. Put a nine nine on the board. But we are into the next game now. Hoy's one nil up with this Druid. Is Life Coach gonna regret not banning Hoy's Druid out? We will see. But it is gonna be Life Coach's Priest as the Priest of well, Priest as the deck of choice to go against this Druid and it is Dragons. I can already uh, answer you the question that they made. Will he regret ban mm -hmm. not banning the druid? And I will say n not. He will not regret it because the thing is, when you have seen the matchup between the druid and the warrior, right? It was super close. Yep. Life code was just really unlucky not drawing the additional damage that he needed. So uh, if you would ask him if what he would like to replay this match or choose any other class, he probably just go. He would just say, yeah, I, yeah, I would yeah. like to play it. Yeah. You know. Especially because, uh, because Holly's been very consistent in starting with his Druid as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. It's almost like too easy to read. Yep. You first pick Druid and he starts with Druid every single opportunity. So you yep. can, you know, Life Coach almost expected, I imagine, the Warrior into the Druid as the first game. But enough of that. We are into uh, the Dragon Priest versus this Druid and Life Coach. Off to a reasonably okay start. Having the Bookworm is nice. Although it looks terrible to say having a six drop on turn one is nice. Knowing all your other dragon effects for quite a while yet are going to be active is pretty useful. But now... The uh, yeah, the Maya Keep is horrible. The Maya Keeper Innervate is such a poor play in this situation because the Druid... Uh, sorry, the Priest has no answer. There's no Shadow Ward pain for it because this is the dragon, um, dragon version. And second of all, there's a Power Ward Shield to help the Twilight World to survive. So basically, it's a free trade, and not only that, but also the value from Fire Keeper is getting to uh, is is the ramp up, right? So mm -hmm. you save the value from the Innervate because your card is not a one-one trade. In this case, it will be tw two, one to two because you lose the Innervate, right? Mm. Uh, but while when you kill a minion and your minion still stays on the board, then the value of the Innervate is not only uh, accelerating the game. But also, it's just a pure card value. Yep. It's still available for you. Two birds, one stone. Yes, exactly. So, and a great position for Holly. Yep. I feel like Life Coach, the play here is to just heal face, hit face, in that order, of course. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, sacrificing the Cleric onto the uh, 
onto the 3-3. Three, three. I, I, I don't know about this. I feel like you kind of need the draw. It depends. It, it really depends. Um, the priest, the dragon priest, relies on the draw less uh, than the control version mm -hmm. because you have minions that present a threat and a huge amount of HP usually. So every single uh, draw will be more impactful than in the control version, which kind of rise on uh, having a huge combo with the cleric. So I'm not blaming him from playing this. I can understand why he's doing that because he, he really is in a bad spot. Like he needs to play the three drop next to him, which is Bran. Like he really needs to do that. Yeah. And if he leaves the free one on board, he he cannot just play the Bran because it ju dies to hero power and the Demar Keeper. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, as you said, Live Coach has a curve three and four. Mm -hmm. So this gives him, uh, you know, quite rarely the best chance to get that out easily. But we do see Wrath available for Hoy now. And I think because this is Dragon Priest, you would like to Wrath here as opposed to Ramp. Because what you what you ramping into, like, you know, in your immediate hand, not a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, w I would like just clearing the board out. Because if Dragon Priest's strength is to just chain on curve drop minions, right? Yeah, but the, the thing is, the Wild Grove gives you opportunity to draw an as a Drake on next uh, Yeah, you do go into five. Yeah, okay. I can get behind that. Mm. I like the Wild Grove. I mean, uh, when you see that your Mark Keeper is already getting value, having a chance to out-ramp your opponent so fast mm -hmm. with two mana crystals, I would go for it. Especially against a Dragon Priest that is playing kind of from behind. Yeah. In this case. See how unfortunate the Raven Idol was from Holly. They had to pick Savagery. Yeah. Normally not the uh, the best pick unless I mean you've got Maligos and, and a big minion to kill. You have a Feral Rage here as well, right? So it's That's not that bad. Yeah. It's actually, you know what? Savagery got, okay, maybe not from bad to decent, but from bad to not slightly terrible. better <laughs> yeah. uh, with this build because you have two Feral Rages. Yep. So you can have now a true. decent target for a one mana removal. Definitely a lot better choices though mm -hmm. from Raven Idol. Brand is going to go down, and I imagine purely because of this, the Twilight. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Life coach, make me look silly. I was going to say the Twilight Whelp would almost guarantee go into the three-two because now Brand is removable quite easily for the Druid. So, by doing this, what Life Coach wants to do um, to say to his opponent, don't curve out. Don't curve out. I really need this board position to like mm. um, to play the Twilight Guardian before you play your first minion, yeah. so I can use my minion uh, to trade into your minions and heal them. And that is possible if if his opponent doesn't play on the curve with an Azure Drake, an example. And um, yeah, basically that's it. Yeah, I guess I'm. I'm just thinking that if the trade happened and the Azure Drake mm. came down and there was just Azure Drake and Bran on the board, that still wouldn't be absolutely terrible for the Druid anyway. Hmm. It'd be kind of awkward, but then you start to expect swipes. Nourish, that's not bad. Definitely not bad. Next thing seems actually pretty decent. You can just drop the Argon Joint if you really want to. Against, uh, against, the, against the Dragon Priest? That's actually a decent option because he doesn't play each other with deaths, right? Uh, I think they will have deaths, right? Will they? I think so. Oh, okay. We'll see. I think you you I think you would play deaths. I'm not sure. I'm and not the uh, in tomb, right? Yeah. But yeah. I'm not really a dragon priest uh, specialist. I would say <laughs> is anyone. Um, so the twilight guardian. Mm -hmm. It looks like the an easy option here. The well into a technician now that it's drawn. It you know helps you go a little bit wider. And I, don't, I guess you don't really need the taunt at this moment in time. No, you don't need the, ta the taunt. Yeah, you have plenty of dragons as well. But at the same well. time, y the Twilight Whelp, in, current in your current hand, the Twilight Whelp is the best activator. Yep. Because it's such a low value card. So, uh, probably the Twilight Garden will be played because of that. Since Bookworm really needs uh, the activator if you want to have something uh, 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 on the board. But he goes for it anyway. Yeah, I guess the idea is the Twilight Guardian, he can use as the activator because he doesn't particularly need the taunt. But mm -hmm. he has the option now. Mm -hmm. He can either put up a taunt, depending on what Hoy does, or potentially remove, you know, a, a low attack minion. So he's sleeved himself with either play whilst making the board as wide as possible. I, I kind of like the play. And now Hoy going with one of his favorite cards, I believe, Nourish. He's going to start to cycle into some Ooh. legendary Spylux things with Maligos and Emperor. Okay, next one seems pretty decent. Uh, it's either Gadzatan or Emperor. If you will get to draw and innervate, Gadzatan seems to become like quite powerful 
on turn 7. Mm -hmm. uh, while the Emperor with the Raven Eye, I will actually think about Raven Eye then into a spell, so we can have it ready and discounted for the Gazetan. But uh, there's also merit to just not play there yet, Raven Eye, even if you have one mana, just to get it for zero mana, so the Gazetan can definitely cycle with the Raven Idol for yeah. basically no effort, right? It's like Hoy is playing around with the idea of the Raven Idol. Like you said, there's merit to both. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be worried about the Raven Idol just whiffing, and then, you know, it's not a spell that's easily castable with Gadget Zan, and then, you know, things get a little bit awkward from there. Well, the Savagery will most likely will be used as a cycle after the Emperor. Yep, he waits with the Raven Idol. I like this. I really like this. This does give Life Coach the opportunity to continue to develop the board, though, and so the board's getting wider and wider. It looks like he's getting there. You know, Hoy in a worse and worse position here. Can he even afford to drop Emperor, or do you think he needs to cycle in? Just wanted to rewind a second, uh, because I think Hoi should have not nourished on the previous turn. When I was talking about the Arcan Giant, I feel like against this in this matchup, playing a huge minion early on the board, and it, when it, well, if your opponent doesn't have an answer, especially with just two cards in his hand, it's like almost winning the game. Yeah, because you can grind out almost every single and creature in your opponent's and deck. And at, at the least, it would slow them down. Yep. Like, at, at the very least. Yep. Okay, so... Let's see Raven Idol there into the Bite. Not a bad option at all. Gonna help with these chunky minions. His, bite with Savagery is actually very yep. decent now. Especially when Savagery is zero mana. Mm -hmm. So next turn could actually be Gadgets and Bite, Savagery. Which is gonna be pretty nice. Priest of Feast coming out for the Life Coach. No spells, but as a 3-6, again, it's just yet another chunky minion on the board. It's going to be a little bit awkward to deal with. True that. Now, there's an option to clear two minions if you want to go for the Bite and Savagery and Hero Power. But I do like the Gadgets then. Yeah, though. the Gadgets then presents a lot of cycle. Although we could hmm. Bite, Savagery, Hero Power, Arcane Giant, right? Yeah, and I like that more. Exactly what what I was thinking. Like the Gazetan doesn't really do that much here. Mm. Like it, a four for minion against this board, not really that great. If you use the sever the bite and savory, you kill only one minion anyway, unless you would draw a moonfire. And maybe that's his. No, that's his four forces, but he didn't draw. So it. here, do you, do you savagery the three three and yep. where where do you go with your face? You attack into the three five, I guess. Always feels awkward not killing minions when priests around. Yeah. You can just apply. I mean, the heals are almost certainly only going to be for two. Uh, the dragon priest doesn't really run the circle package anyway with the Alcano. Hmm. Yeah, this is the awkward spot, isn't yeah. it? Where it's like, ah, one extra damage would be pretty nice, right? Now. Just try and knock down the health, of the priest, of the feast, because if a heal goes on now, the uh, the gadget zone does actually kill it off anyway. Is your Drake's gonna come down? Life coach. Decent follow up with Wilmer stage and actually that's a pretty good draw. Yeah, but what do you do with the gadget zone? Do you leave it again on board and just deal six damage to your face? Opponent's face, I mean. Oh, that's so awful. You are pressuring your opponent though. Life coach has back to back very similar games. Like he never draws the additional damage and has a very difficult choice of do I sacrifice two for one, especially mm. with minions who have way more high value when it comes to consistent damage over time, uh, and you need that to finish up the game because Priest has no burst. Like, actually sacrificing here a six damage onto the face and one minion out of it, and then leaving the second minion to die to a swipe, it's quite horrible. Mm, especially when your opponent's only an 18. Yeah. If the druid was on 30, then yeah, okay, you know, you need to play a longer game, but... And now do you want to play Wormer's Agent or heal the 3-1? I think one. you heal the 3-1. <laughs> Wormer's Agent is very easy to slip into a turn because it's only 2 mana, mm -hmm. whereas Swipe just completely blow blows you out, like, really hard this turn, so... Feral Rage is going to pop up, so that would also be another nice combo for Gadget Zen. And for mm. Savagery even, sorry. But Nourish, yeah. draw 3 cards. Arcan Giant for zero, have five mana left. Yep, seems decent. Yep, and depending on what comes out, of course, he could just fell rage, worst yep. case. You know, when your worst case scenario is kill the Azure Drake, great. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good outcome. A Drake, an Innovate, and a Wild Grove. Hmm. No, not the best ones, but 
you can still go for the Federal Rage, as you said. Federal Rage and Arcan Giant seems like a decent option. Yeah, and also having to innovate when you have Malagos reduced to eight is actually pretty huge. Yep. You can start to cast swipes on the same turn you play Malagos, which is kind of ridiculous. And he didn't draw a single swipe yet. Nope. And he's drawn a hell of a lot of his deck. Yep. That's uh, two Nourish draws, right? Correct. Oh, he's going for the Mind Keeper? Huh. Okay. Now, Mind Keeper... Okay. Yeah, he goes sure. for the Innovate this time, yeah. I, I was kind of like tunnel vision into uh, keeping the Innovate for the Malagos, but you, that's right, you don't need that. Oh yeah, you definitely don't need it. it. If there was a swipe in hand now, then you'd probably hold off. Mm -hmm. But because there isn't, you know, you just build up a wider board and ask the Priest to try and deal with it. And when, when Dragon Priest falls behind on board, it's very difficult to get back, actually. Yeah, that's true. There's an option to heal uh, your 3-3 three, three and trade it to 3-3, three, three. but the other option is just to play Wormer's Agent and leave a 3-3 three, three alive. So to push for damage, which is important in this matchup. Or do you actually like trade and try and make the Giant go into the 2-4? No, you can. As I said before, the you need to end the game. this Priest ha doesn't have any, any just damage. Like, what do you do? How do you finish up the game? You need something to push the damage, and that means you need minions for that. And if you trade here, not only use, uh, you lose free damage, but you, you also tell your opponent, yeah, you know what? I don't have means to win the game mm -hmm. anymore. Imagine if the Innovate was still in hand. Yeah. Oh, would have been be so <laughs> Like Swipe. In Remove your opponent's board. <laughs> instant win, actually, <laughs> in this case, yeah. in this matchup. Because also, how does... Um, what? Okay, if the Dragon Priest plays in Tomb, it's fine. But other than that, how does the Priest deal with Malagos? Like, you, it's one of those situations similar to the no Freeze Mage match where you play it and you just like, yep. enjoy. Like, try and deal with this. Swipe obviously is still going to get a pretty pretty good value here. So it's not like it was uh, wasted or anything from Holly, but I'm always a fan of Malagos Swipe when at all possible. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you go face here, right? Yep. What, what burn are you scared of? Like, you, you can't even like double Blackwing Corruptor. If you're scared, then you just use the Living Roots against the free yeah. one and go face. He has Malagos, though. Yeah, but that doesn't really matter because the damage from Arcan Giant evens that out. Yeah, but I think you just go Arcan Giant face, and then you have... Is Malagos Living Roots the next turn lethal? I think so. Because you'd have eight... Uh, it, yeah. In this matchup, when you, I feel like you don't need to close it out next turn. I mean, you can, but... I just like setting up like next turn lethal. <laughs> well, there's, there's just three damage on the board. What's going to happen? What, what's the priest going to play? That's going to make you either afraid of your health, or I suppose. No oh, wait, why, why heal the? Because he he needs shadow with death, I guess. No, he was drawing for a dragon to kill the free one. That would be my guess. So, but he didn't draw that anyway. No, because if he drew a dragon, he could kill the three one anyway. Yeah, the but one. so then you can heal it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he healed the... Yeah. So he didn't need to heal the giant, I guess. Interesting. Anyway, this seems like a losing position, even if he would get to draw that. So, tough luck. Moonglade now. I mean... You don't need to Moonglade. No. But is, is the... is the, I suppose the second Azure Drake's fine. Yeah, Azure Drake and Living Roots deals with the... I Harrison just think, Jones. like, how value is the card draw versus a potential, like, insane six drop, plus heal, just to really push you out of any danger. There's no way you die, even with 11 HP. No way. I mean, I think you just wild growth first regardless, right? You can actually play the Isaac Drake. Yeah. What? I like the Isaac Drake more than... Um, <gasps> oh, you can Maligos. Well, Maligos and then what? I mean, he could just live in Roots to 5-4 and save the Azure Drake. That's the same thing with Azure Drake. You can play Azure Drake and... Oh, play. sorry, yeah, it'll give you pl plus one anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not not used to uh, counting up double uh, Azure Drake. To be honest, power. whatever he does here doesn't really matter because he still kills his opponent on his yeah. yeah, hell of a lot of damage. Same for Hoi now. Holy Nova. Not going to help, and there's nothing you can do about Maligos. Yep. So even if you know, remove the spell power from the minion, it's a 412. Like, it'll just keep hitting you, and that is going to be it. And Hoy somehow again goes uh, 
He's 2 0 up so far. Everything goes druid. down when you lose with, con with Dragon Warrior against the Druid. Yeah. It was so close for Life Coach to prevent the game two with that deck and still be ahead with this Dragon Warrior against his uh, opponent's lineup. Uh, it's really unfortunate for him, but that's. That's what happens when just kind of lack on on answers to, towards the um, towards the druid, which just puts a threat after threat after threat. When you consider every single minion from the druid, like as a trick, a threat on its own. You can't leave that around because there's a swipe, there's a moonfire, there's rap, there's mm -hmm. living roots. Uh, then you have a gazetan. Well, you can't leave that around because it draws card because there are so many spells. Emperor. Well, you can't leave that around because there's a malagos and it allows the Weird combos, right? Then you have Fandral. Too much value from Fandral with every single spell. Mm -hmm. Arcan Giant. Well, that just kills you. Yeah, well, that's so just an 8-8 <laughs> eight eight that's going to slap you in the face. <laughs> yeah. So, it, Did I miss any minion? I mean, Maya uh, Keeper. Okay, you can ignore uh, Maya Keeper sometimes, but wow, that's about it. Don't be mean to Maya Keeper, Lothar. What's he ever done to you except help you ramp? Okay, so we are going to get into game three. Obviously, Hoyo on his Druid, of course, as he is 2-0 up with this so far. And Life Coach onto the Tempo Mage. And this was, I believe, the list we saw him struggle with the most. Mm -hmm. uh, he made the, the, the most sort of uh, misplays slash questionable plays. I wouldn't say his plays were completely incorrect, but, you know, they, they were shaky. It's probably the best uh, description there. So we'll see what he can do versus this Druid and if he can pull it together. And, uh, and reverse Yeah, and, and try and reverse. It's going to be difficult, though. I think it's going to be very difficult. Because Hottie's lineup, I think uh, the the Priest could do pretty well versus the Mage, yeah. to be honest. So that's going to be kind of awkward. All th all the uh, Mage minions die <laughs> to, to all like the, the Funky Priest uh, tricks. So it's kind of awkward there. But we're going to focus on this match for now. It's going to be the Druid versus the Mage. just wanted to say that Life Coach is lacking on any spells, but... Fortunate for him, he drew actually the best one. Arcane Blast mm -hmm. with the Cold Sorcerer right now is pretty damn sweet. Takes care of an Azudrake, uh, helps to take care of um, Fandral and the Emperor. So it's it's one of the uh, one of the few ways most cla well any class can easily deal with an innovate target. Yeah, because most innovate targets early on, unless they they like innovate innovate coins, something stupid. But like the average just innovate into Maya Keeper, for example, mm -hmm. you can actually mm -hmm. just quite happily deal with with our cane blast and the uh, cult sorcerer so does have a good answer there and pretty low curve overall just working out whether um, he wants to give the mana worm the, the potential to be wrathed because you know i don't know if I, I mentioned this when we when we cast yesterday but the, a, a lot of the time it's actually nice to hold on to mana worm mm -hmm. you don't always have to just throw it out there especially when you have a nice low curve hand like this but speaking <laughs> of innovating my <Maya laughs> keeper there we go how is drawing like mad yeah to be honest i don't think he ever missed a ramp ramp, yeah, ramp option in yeah. his he's very games. very good at druid um now with the arcane missiles it, it i don't really think it changes too much I think well, I think you can you still can just go for the sorcerer and the uh, arcane blast. You can go for the sorcerer's apprentice, keep the coin for the flame waker, and bang that the arcane missiles deals actually the one damage to the my keeper. So you go arcane blast, arcane missiles. But if you miss, yeah, you're like oh oh. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. Yeah. So. Um, and you can miss. That's the problem. <laughs> when you go for these plays, I I personally would play it very safe and just go arcane. Uh, sorry, uh, cult sorcerer and blast. It's mm -hmm. a shame because you don't get the full, like, the four damage is really nice versus stuff like Azure Drake and uh, Gadgetzan, but I would rather put another minion on the board, buff up the Mana Worm, mm -hmm. and then build mm -hmm. on that because next turn you can have Sorcerer's Apprentice, oh, which then sets up for Flame Waker and Silliness the turns after. Yep. He goes for the safe play and I like also it. builds, as I said, the Arkham Missiles better uh, with the Sorcerer's Apprentice for the next turn. And the Mana Worm's a threat. The Mana Worm is actually 3-3 now. Three, yeah. I, think, I think we'll actually see a swipe here. To deal with the mana burn, or uh, maybe hmm. not, because there's a Raven Idol which can get you something to remove that mana burn. But, but to if be it honest, doesn't... to be honest, that mana burn, if there's one more spell like a Frostbolt, right? There's next turn, there's a Frostbolt to your face. It deals four damage. Mana burn is four damage. Three damage from, uh, That's from all the Sorcerer's <laughs> Sorcerer Apprentice. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think you need to stop this because Tempo Mage has been being built lately more and more mm -hmm, to deal with mm -hmm. the late game, to beat with the control decks. Yeah. But it can also just do this. <laughs> you know, it goes like, you know, to one to two to three, and then with spells to just finish. And yep. it, all it takes is, you know, an extra fireball out of nowhere, and then the game's over. And Druid doesn't really have a good way of dealing with it. So I do like the swipe. It's going to feel kind of rough now, 
because of the flame wicker coming down on three. He which wants a second swipe. Let's see if he gets it. If he gets it, this is like ridiculous. Oh, oh my God! Snap pick oh, swipe from Raven Idol. Oh God! <laughs> and that looks. Oh. To be honest, I don't like to be like you know, a pessimist, but this is like. But a that's nail. grim. Yeah. This, this is like a nail to the coffin. Yeah, there's still a chance. Blood Mage Thanos is going to be pretty reasonable for draw, and I wouldn't mind it just being dropped down now. It has to just be. <laughs> just it play it. It has to be. Your, your, your opponent is so much ahead mm -hmm. because he's curving out higher than you, so yeah. the longer the game takes, he will have more value than you, and he still has one more swipe in the deck. Mm. He has two wraps, two living roots, uh, two moonfires, and he has... Now he can start dropping those and Gazetans, those as a Drake. He also, even though we can see Emperor's available, which mm -hmm. feels pretty reasonable, but also the perfect Moonclade portal to go back up to full help yeah. is like everything is lining up very well for Hoy here and Live Coach, as we can see. Taking his time, not too much of a surprise. Um, but I do feel that no matter what happens, Thanos needs to come down because you don't care about the spell power anymore. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. need to cycle into your, your as your Drakes into almost anything that can get some work done here. Mm -hmm. he keeps the if, if there was an arcane blast, I would I wouldn't mind keeping the Thanos because that's mm -hmm. like pretty hard hitting removal for very cheap. But I do like it being played here. As I said, it's just uh, too good to skip on. I think. As a Drake Moonfire seems pretty decent, I would say. But the yeah. Moonglade Portal is also nice. Yes, uh, as you Drake Moonfire seems okay as well, uh, I agree, because, like again, it's just Apprentice can uh, initiate silly turns from your opponent. The one, if you're w one thing that you're worried is a Arcane Intellect, but I'm 100% sure that if uh, Lifecut would uh, had an Arcane Intellect in his hand, he would have played it last turn. So. Uh, instead of like the bear flame inst waker. Instead of the no no uh, instead of the Falnos. because he would have played Sorcerer's Apprentice into Arcane oh, Intellect. Oh, sorry, this turn. Sorry, so I thought you said last turn. Sorry. You, you don't need to play the Azure Dragon Moonfire into this mm. because of that reason, uh, because that's the only thing you're worried about, and maybe Cabal Stone. But we know that Life Coach is not a fan of that card, so he doesn't play it. <laughs> and so the I think there are two options. It's Moonly Portal because you are pretty in a decent shape and you get a decent minion from it, or just the guaranteed. Uh, Forreston and, but the Forreston value here not really that. Yeah, uh, so I, I would favor the portal. I, I think for the Thorison, like it enables portal hero power next turn, but you know nothing really lines up very well mm -hmm. unless mm -hmm. something uh, great comes out of the it's your Drake or the next card draw of course. Flame Strike, coming in for Life Coach. Not going to do too much this turn of course. Does have the option for next turn if this Sorcerer Prince is, isn't dealt with him. The four damage arcane missiles are going to be huge. And oh, this is not what Life Coach wanted to this see. This is definitely that not is horrendous. what he wanted to see. So now you draw first, right? He needs to, uh, to cycle the Falnos, get a Into Frostbolt. Frostbolt yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, look, the, the head drops. Yeah. This is this is not what you want. You the Sorcerer's Apprentice is one of the engines that will get you back in this game by cheating, basically, because yeah. you can do everything earlier than possible or more stuff available in your turn, and that is that is pretty reasonable. He is as well. missing on the turn now, and that is quite horrible. His third swipe is available as well. Now we can even use Moonfire Hero Power if you want to, or just cycle for it. Nah, makes no sense. So Moonfire Hero Power or just wrap for four. And I feel like Moonfire Hero Power would be better because you still have mana for Swipe Wrath Hero Power next mm -hmm. turn. And Swipe Wrath Hero Power is like, you can clear everything. Pretty decent, yeah. That's yeah good. You can kill everything. Yeah, you can definitely get some work done with that kind of combo. And it's going to be the Moonfire Hero Power, not too much of a surprise. I don't think you're really planning on winning this game with the Maligos Moonfire combos. Yeah, you don't you just to. burn the mage out of uh, any possibility. Ooh, in one turn too late, but... He can clear it. He can clear now yeah. the Azure Drake, correct. Yeah. Imagine if the Apprentice couldn't have been dealt with, and you just file and portal, and, and just start cheating the game out, and that is the way yeah. that Life Coach could claw himself back. But Frostball, at least it's something, right? At least it's an answer. And you're not just passing. <laughs> well, he might actually think about not using the Frostbolt right now. Because the problem is, is gonna what do you do with the Flame Strike? That, that's true. That's true. So the idea here is to Flame Strike this turn. And then Phylon's Portal the turn after, I guess. But the problem is, like, there are so many minions that will put you out oh of Flame Strike. Right? So that's the second one of those we've seen this tournament. From, uh, from the Moonblade Portals as well. Just to point that out. So what do you do with that minion? 
But this is the issue with waiting for the flame strike, right? Yeah. Because it's only four damage. Yeah, because like they weren't. Although there's another Azure Drake, a um, Gadget Zant as well. There's a lot of other minions that are more than four damage. So this is tough. And now, now the portal kills the Azure Drake. And hopefully, there's something that's going to challenge. Ooh. Okay. Well, it's if it trades, it opens six. up to a ping. Yeah, but still, you lose the, you lose the value game here. Like, there's no way you can uh, cheat out a druid. Wrath yeah. is going to do four and draw with Fandral. Let's see what we're going to draw into. It's going to be Nourish, which is on time. As Hoy is about to run out of cards. Now he can just Nourish to refill. And worst case, can Nourish into Swipe next turn. As the 7-6 on board. And this is a very, very scary moment for Life Coach because he's still... Oh, well. He ha right. Th there's the chance. The flame strike into missiles to clear the board. Yeah, and he needs to go for I it. I think he has to, yeah. Otherwise, you're just dead. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you can't really even chance leaving Fandral up either. This is a small chance go. of happening, but will it happen? I, I think it happened, actually. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, the worst. Well, not the worst. Three to face would be worse, but... Still, both minions being alive is going to and that's it. end this game. Hoy does it again. 3-0 with Druid. 3-0 with Druid. When will people ban it? It's crazy. Well, uh, stuff happens when you don't draw the additional damage. Yeah, we saw multiple games. Uh, I think the, the that that game was the, the most one-sided, I would mm -hmm. say. But the first two games were extremely close. Uh, life coach with the warrior and the dragon priest, you know, built up the board, put him on a quite a lot of pressure, but Hoy just managed to clear it out every single time. Yep. That was um, a really tough match uh, for, for life coach. It feels like every single time he was missing something, suboptimal draws every single time. But yeah, that's a card game. You need to deal with that. Uh, you need to be prepared. You need to play the best turns you, you are given. Like, what is the English saying? Uh, you being dead, uh, you, de you play the play cards you've the dealt. Cards you're being dead. That's yeah, actually Thanks, the thing that happened. I, I still, I still <laughs> hey, just like I, I've been, I've been here for a moment. But uh, I still go back to this first game where Hoy um, didn't play the giant, like Innervate mm. didn't play the giant, and if Life Coach gets just one point of damage, he just wins, right? So uh, there is a couple of outs there. He had um, Corruptor to deal free, and he still had mana to play maybe a second Fire War X or the champion. But let's look at the best place of the match first. So. We have we had only three games here. It's a 3-0 with the Druid, even though it was really close. So here Mali goes into swipe. That's a lot of damage just dealing with the whole board. That was a big turn there, especially also just playing the giant that was missed last turn. Yeah, the giant could <laughs> the giant could have come <laughs> could have come out a little bit earlier, but I think the uh, the interesting one here is the, the not the curator. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, earlier on, obviously, we, we sort of gone, pa uh, well, gone past the opportunity now. To be honest, I understand why Azadrake instead of Curator, because if you draw the weapon, you immediately deal free damage. Also, you get to, uh, you have a chance to draw the uh, Cochrane Elite, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and the Finley. But but the the Curator thingy deck as well. Yeah, but and by two cards, where Azadrake does the half of it. But you, if you hit, but he does it immediately. But if you hit it, but you the, can but also but the hit that play. turn. Yeah, the hit that turn wasn't lethal though, was it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. But he also had an Alex Raza champion in the deck, so there was a lot true, of uh, three outs yeah, that he yeah, could have yeah. played immediately, that's true. and all, all, all other outs that can be played next turn. Yep. So I can understand why uh, as a Drake instead of the creator. And we see the uh, the savage draw off the Raven Idol help clear mm -hmm. up that first game for Hoy, and this was the uh, the beginning of the end. We see a really well fought game with the life coaches dragon priest and, and another I, th another I think this is the swing point. right yeah this is definitely the swing i mean it seemed like hoy has a has a good grasp but definitely that swipe off the top with the other drag was able to clear the board um here an interesting decision with the roots do you play roots do you not play roots because if you play roots you can go eight to phase like even you don't really have to kill them and you can just go for phase but hoy decided to be super uh secure and safe and just kill everything he can to ensure the win for 100 yeah. percent. this was pr probably the uh, the swing in this game as well it yeah. swipes mvps yeah for hoy this series like the swipe coming off the raven idol was insane and i believe we saw raven idol swipe in an earlier game as well um, which really helped out and the last chance for life coach the arcane missiles clearing up the minions to give him a shot at staying imagine, in this game wasn't enough. imagine if you would have hit that and then bubbly, bubbling book into capitalist tome oh, <laughs> and then we would have got a truly crazy game and then it's like, on oh, our hands oh but we have hoy here yeah, yeah. hoy with he's with us and uh hoy so four key swipes 
that won you this, uh, yeah, this it was match. It was really, really good when I got the stripe for the flame breaker. But like, if I get a bite or a fell race, I could also like clear the board with moonfire. But yeah. stripe mm -hmm, was definitely mm -hmm. the best card I could get there. Yeah. But honestly, let's let's go to the beginning of the match. So the most important part is pick and bans. Have you won the pick and bans? Were you happy about just getting the druid and uh, being able to have it, and with the other decks as well? Yeah, I was really happy to get my druid, but I would also have been really, really happy to get my control wire because control wire like wrecks. Uh, life cost lineup, so it makes sense that he bans the control wire. Mm -hmm. So then I was happy to get my druid, and I won three games for druid without playing Yog this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without the Yog. Although That's there was true. some uh, there was some shaky moments. Yeah, there was uh, some shaky <laughs> moments. <laughs> with the, uh, again, the the rope not being kind to you. Yeah, because in this I, I was really really annoyed that I couldn't innovate my eight eight giant yeah. because if he didn't have execute, I could clear with the eight eight giant to the nine nine. I didn't have to rely on being on four HP. Then I could fail rage next turn and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. almost guarantee because now I had to like rely that he doesn't have four damage. Mm. Yeah. That's good. There's all a lot of uh, like situations when uh, putting a pressure on board could have you won the, the game like already. Yeah. Like three turns before, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Do you have any more questions for Hoy? No, just congratulations on and yet another three zero with this druid list, and uh, I'm still wondering when people start to just ban it out. Yeah, JJ. Through, uh, through fair. Yeah, JJ did it, and it worked out right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and JJ was one of the first players I saw after you know the first few rounds of the tournament yeah. and like the group stages. JJ was like. Just get rid of the druid. <laughs> It'll be fine. You know, like, d d like discard all previous strategy. Just yeah. clear the druid out, and it should be a much easier matchup. Like you said, it did work. So we'll see if your uh, your next opponent is going to try that strategy. Yes. Yeah. So how congratulations again. You've avenged six zero. You advance in the lower bracket. Your next opponent is going to be either Stansivka or Crane, uh, which is going to be the next match, guys. So Crane versus Stansivka coming up next elimination match. The winner uh, is going to face Hoy. The loser is going to be eliminated. Stay tuned.